Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Michael Kaluva and I'm a patient with rheumatoid arthritis. I wanted to make a video today about social distancing during the pandemic with rheumatoid arthritis. So I know it's been really a crazy time. Um, if you saw my last video, um, I hope you guys have. And it is about just talking about the everyday struggle with living in this pandemic with rheumatoid arthritis. So if you haven't yet, go back to my first video, watch that. And if you guys haven't yet, subscribe below and make sure to like the video. And I also appreciate comments. I will comment back for you guys. So if you guys have something to say, something to share, definitely leave it below. I love to hear everything you guys have to say, the good, the bad, the ugly. So um, I take all, all comments, uh, you know, at face value and we'll take it from there. I love to reply to all of them. So um, without further ado, I wanna get into my video and really just talk about what social distancing means to me with someone that has rheumatoid arthritis. I don't know if anybody has really touched upon this yet because it's so new. We've only been in a lockdown for I think about 30 days now or so, maybe a little over, probably like 36 maybe. I have been in mine for about three, over three weeks now. Um, I'm feeling great. I, you know, have been really doing my part in anything I can to stay away from anyone or anything that I think is compromising my health or my immune system. So for me, number one is I live right now um, in a condo. So for me, it's a little difficult to leave my house without having to touch the elevator or a door to the stairs. And of course, I live in a very um, tall condo in a high rise. So it's not just as easy to take the stairs every time. And with elevators, we do have a building policy that you can only have, I think, three people in the elevator at a time, which I even think is a lot. There are a lot of elderly people in my building, and I get really nervous about even just being close to them. I know I'm okay. Like, I have no symptoms. I don't feel like I have anything. Um, I'm just worried for them mostly. Like, I'm worried for other people as well. Um, I don't think that they have it. I haven't heard of any cases in my building. I know that if we do get a case, we are supposed to report it to the building with an email. And then it's, of course, it can be um, somewhat anonymous, um, but I think they do want to pinpoint if somebody in the building has contracted it so that we can uh, stay ahead of it. So that's one of my major concerns with social distancing already is just where I live. Um, a lot of people have houses and right now I'm really jealous about that. <laughs> I'm not at my house. Um, and with that, you have your own little bit of territory. You can go outside, you can touch your doorknobs. No one else is gonna touch them really besides you, especially not right now. Even the mailman is not gonna touch it. Um, so I'm really um, more concerned about where, you know, the living situation. So you guys can, if you can control your environment as much as you can, that is the best thing to do. I know a lot of people have roommates. I know a lot of people live in apartments. I know a lot of people, um, have, you know, not ideal situations. Um, I'm fortunately enough where I can seclude myself. Yes. Um, do I have to leave the condo sometimes and go get food and, you know, take my dog out? Yes. Um, but at the same time, I limit it. I try to do it maybe if I'm going to go to the grocery store, I also go do my gas and do everything at one time. So I'm not going out multiple times. I think limiting, um, my accessibility to the public right now is the best thing you can do for someone that's autoimmune because with that, you just decrease the chances of picking up this virus, which we just don't know enough about yet. And I just hear so many different reports every day. And it's just like, I just want true hard facts and it's, they're just not there yet. So until that happens, I'm going to be playing it safe and be on the more, um, you know, skeptical side of things right now while we're learning about it. Um, with that being said, it's also been very hard not seeing my friends, my family, and even my coworkers. You know, you build a rapport with so many people and 
um, just the daily people that you used to see, like even just going to lunch, like my certain place I go for lunches and you, um, you know, the certain person that you see at the corner store that you always go to or the familiar face at the cleaners or just the familiar faces you get to just by socializing just a little bit. And sometimes with us, we're used to being inside. So maybe it's the familiar voices on the phone that we're used to hearing, that we're used to calling, the receptionist at the doctor's office that we're used to talking to. I think those things are, we still need those little bit of interactions here and there. So with that, it's been really difficult. Um, I think cutting off all social contact is not healthy. I think people still need to be in contact with other people. I think you still need to be in contact with your friends, your family, your loved ones. Um, and you need to make sure as well that your partner or your spouse or your roommate or whatever is also doing the same. There's a lot of people that aren't going to be watching this video. And sometimes, you know, just by hearing that, you're able to make a difference in somebody's life. So I think that if you just maintain somewhat of a social you know, realm of some sort. I think a lot of good outlets right now, of course, is Zoom meetings. Everyone's using Zoom. A lot of people are using WhatsApp. And I think those two are amazing. I'm still learning them. I'm not really good on everything. I think FaceTime is what I use the most. Um, it's what my family has available. Uh, and I really do enjoy, you know, seeing everyone's faces. Yesterday, it was so exciting to me. I was able to see my 94-year-old grandmother in Los Angeles. And she, um, I haven't been able to see her since January in person because when all of this started coming out, I was traveling and I just didn't even want to get close to her. She's already compromised enough. So I was able to see her on FaceTime and it just brought a big smile to my face. And I think people need to remember to smile and remember to see other people's faces and really interact as much as possible. Like it's not the same texting. And even with the phone conversation, you yeah, of course hearing someone's voice is even better than a text, of course, or a meme or whatever. But I think having that face interaction really does something. And I mentioned something on this on my last video too. Because, I don't know, there's just something about having a face-to-face -face with somebody that just makes it feel like, okay, this is, you know, it's more authentic. I feel that, like, this person, when they're looking at me, the emotions I can see that I usually can't see behind the telephone or the text messages. I can see them in person. It just, it helps a lot. And... I know this is going to be the new normal for a lot of people for a long time. This is not going away anytime soon, unfortunately. So I think we really have to adapt and really kind of take a look at ourselves and say, what can we do to make this our new normal? And I think people with rheumatoid arthritis, we are already isolated so much that we really have to take a look and just say, okay, I'm already not going out to see friends as much right now, of course, um, but I can still stay in contact with them. I should stay in contact with them. Even my family, I'm not going over for Sunday dinners or I'm not going over for, you know, our weekly, um, our weekly outing or whatever you guys do, a walk, whatever you guys do as a family. Um, but really make it important. I know some people are even stuck too much with their family and they're like, oh, I need to get out. I need to do that. So talking with other people or even socializing on Twitter or other social media platforms, Instagram. Um, I am on Twitter a lot at Michael Kaluva. Make sure to follow me on Twitter as I am a part of a lot of different arthritis chats, which I think are so helpful. You get different people in the community and you're able to really just focus on, you know, people with arthritis. What are we feeling? What are our questions specifically? The world has other questions. We we know those questions. We all have the same ones, but these are really specific to us. And that's why these videos are really important to me as well in making them because I think that if, even if I am not a doctor, I am a patient, I do, you know, have some knowledge of this disease and I just know that if anybody could be helped by just a little bit of, you know, what I'm saying here, even if it's just you can relate to what I'm saying, even if it's just taking your mind off of the daily for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I'm glad that's helping. So 
what I'm saying is, in all in all, is that we, yes, we do have to keep our social distance, but not, you know, really isolate ourselves from the entire community. Another thing that I like to do now, since I have a puppy again, um, and I know a lot of arthritis people um, and patients in the community have dogs and animals. So if you do, my friend and I like to just go into her backyard. We'll close the gate off. We'll let the two dogs go and play. And we'll keep our social distance, of course. But at least there's some interaction there. I don't do it a lot, of course. Um, I've only done it once or twice. But it really does get me out. And, and, and I feel safe. I don't feel like, oh, I'm going to be in public. I'm on the street. Um, someone's going to cough on me when they walk by. I don't feel that. I feel like, okay, I'm in a safe area. I'm in a gated backyard. Um, we're staying, you know, six feet apart. I haven't got my measuring tape here from Tumblr and Tipsy. So I, I measure, you know, we just stay apart. And no, I, I don't measure. But um, no, we do stay apart. And, you know, the dogs get to play. And, you know, it gets me out for just a little bit. And I don't feel that I am compromised at all. I think the only compromising thing for me at that end would just be leaving the condo itself. So just looking at it in whole, I do it on days if I'm going to go to the market, I might, you know, or if I have to go to the, get some gas or whatever it is, I'll bring my dog with me. We'll make it an extra stop. And that extra stop for 30 minutes might make the difference for my week. So I just like to point out these little situations because I know that we're all kind of going into a new normal here and I keep saying that cause it really is something that is really a bit to adjust to um I'm not used to it I'm still looking at what the future is going to be for a lot of things I know that we are not going to be having events the same way and um, I think that these online events that we're having now like chats on Twitter and these chats that we're having right now on YouTube and your Zoom meetings and your WhatsApp chats and your FaceTimes, I think this is going to be what's going to happen for a while. And I'm okay with that. I feel safe. I feel I feel that we can definitely communicate what we need to at a, at a distance. Um, but I do miss, you know, of course, having someone right next to you and, you know, laughing with you right there. But I think if you just keep this up, this will be, you know, how we're going to get through it. I think just by being coherent and staying relative and making sure you're in your routine. That's the other thing I touched upon in my last video is, you know, staying in your routine. I think that really makes a difference. So if that puts you into putting you your social interactions into your routine, you know, make sure you do that at 2.30, 3 o'clock every day, you call X, Y, and Z. Maybe there's a time difference. So you know, you have to put it into your schedule, but don't forget it. Make sure that you guys are staying healthy and staying well. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I really want, you know, you guys, what I said before, you know, if you just takes 10, 15 minutes out of your day and you just don't have to think about other things, I hope that works. Or maybe it makes you think about other things to really make yourself a little bit safer, a little bit calmer. Um, I hope it does. Uh, comment below. Make sure you subscribe. Like the video if you do. And share with friends. Uh, I will be making videos every Monday and every Thursday. So make sure to come back and see what is new. Uh, yeah. Okay, everyone. I'm Michael Kaluva. Thank you so much for watching my video about social distancing with the pandemic. Uh, this is all still very new and we're still getting used to it. So I'm sure I'll have an updated version of this video at some time. All right, everyone be safe and stay healthy. Bye.